React India. Wow, I just want to say it has been amazing. I got here, I got to meet so many wonderful people. I have to say, India, you've been, <laughs> you've been amazing. You've been so friendly and so kind. And it's been a, a really impressive time just talking to each and every one of you. I hope that we all get to talk after my talk as well. One of the things I really learned to respect is just how difficult it is. <laughs> Every time I see somebody from India in my country, now I have a new level of respect for them because it took so many hours just for me to fly here. And it was so difficult. I want to say it wasn't, it wasn't going to be even possible if it wasn't for the organizers who went ahead and they were supportive and they were friendly and they took care, they reached out, they made the connections, they made it worth it for every single hour. I do it all over again. I love you all. For the organizers, thank you so much. And those organizers brought me here, and I took some pictures the other day, and I put them, I sent them to somebody, and they said, oh, not a big turnout, huh? I was like, well, it's the workshop day. Like, what are you doing? Like, there wasn't, there wasn't enough people in there. And now I'm here and I'm looking at all these faces, 10,000 people streaming in the, in the internet, and then a whole other room in the other room where people can watch this on TV. The thing that happens is people don't know just how special it is to be right here, right now. And that is your job. That's your job for the organizers, to tweet, to get the hashtag trending, to make the whole world feel it in their bones. Yeah. Just how amazing is it? Volume meter, I just need one more of those, just from all of you. I want you to take photos, I want you to tweet, and I want you to just feel this in your heart, because when you feel it, everybody who's watching is going to feel it. Give it to me one more time. Yeah? Yeah. All right. That's too high, that's too high. No, oh, no, quiet oh. down, quiet down. Okay. Oh. Yeah? Okay. Yeah? Yeah! 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 <laughs> Yes, thank you very much, sir. Woo! All right, let's get started here. This beautiful animation is going to fade out, and then you'll see a much cooler animation. <laughs> so we're talking here a little bit about AI vision with React. Now, I know a lot of people have very strong feelings about AI, and it's very important for you to have those feelings. It's very important for us to talk about it, and it's ultimately important for us all to know exactly what we're talking about. And some of you know more than me. Some of you are afraid to know more than me. Some of you already just want to be told what we're going to have happen. And that's, that's what, what I plan on doing. I'm going to demystify AI for us today. So we're going to talk it, and of course we're going to bring in some photos of me. And I have my book coming. Uh, I think maybe I'll talk about that. I'm a published author with O'Reilly. I mailed it here. I apparently got here faster than my book. <laughs> so uh, hopefully you will all get to see it. But uh, I did bring three copies, so I will choose three people that went ahead and tagged me on Twitter. If I meet you, and then I have my book, I will go ahead and sign and give it to you. So yes, definitely follow me on Twitter, at Gantt Laborde. So, machine learning. We all love machine learning. As a matter of fact, everybody wants to put it in everything, unnecessarily. <laughs> I actually did um, the FizzBuzz algorithm in machine learning once as a that's the best way to go ahead and overdo a job interview. And it can do so many things. And one of the problems that happens is that it's just so applicable. It's like a new power source. It's like a new battery that just doesn't run out. It could do all kinds of amazing things for us. And that means it can do the good things and it can do the bad things. And it's us who get to talk about what we should be applying, what AI should be allowed to do, and what it should not be doing. I'm going to try to stay away from talking about ethics a lot, because that could be a whole talk just by itself. But just know that when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about the most ethical uses for AI, the ones that make all of our lives better, that raises the quality and standard for all of us. So what is AI going to do? That's the big question. We all want to know, OK, I've got it. Is this going to be gone like the crypto bros? Or is this going to be something where I just wake up in the morning, I think about coffee, and it just shows up, right? Uh, Vladimir is working on that, by the way. It's one of his conference talks. So this is a great quote. Uh, it says, history doesn't repeat itself, but it sure rhymes. Uh, Mark Twain said, it sure as hell rhymes. That's what he said. 
So what that means is that we can look a little bit into the past just to see what we can expect in the future. And that's what I'd like to do for you to start off with AI so I can talk about how you can expect it to come in and work with you in React, how you can expect to see this in your everyday world because you're already hearing about it in sort of a general playful way, but what happens when a client comes to you and they start saying, hey, we want this model in this browser and we want it to perform at 30 uh, frames per second. You're like, I don't know anything about AI yet. I guess I'll figure that out. So you need to know what's coming. And so what is AI going to do? Well, first of all, I just want to say a lot of bad things first. Does anybody remember this app right here? There was an app on the App Store as soon as the iPhones were released called I Am Rich. And it was set for the maximum price of $999.99 US. And it, all it did was show that red dot. That was the app that they wrote in iOS. And it sold. It sold like six or seven times. So the person who made that in a couple of seconds wound up doing that. It's just showing that we can. That's how people like to start. And what happens there is when you see that people can, it's a confusing thing. So we're about to enter a new world. And so I like to use this example in saying that we are in the Google Maps phase of AI. And I like this example because when Google Maps first came out and they announced it on their official blog, I said, that's amazing. I can't wait for this. They did that in 2005. And then they released an API in 2006. And I sat down and I said, I'm going to come up with something great to do with this API. And I was like, I could put pins on maps. Oh, wait, Google Maps already does that. I could uh, do a subset of a map. Oh, it already does that. I could go ahead and just have some of the features of Google Maps in my app. I was like, nobody cares. And so I sat down for a little bit, and after about an hour, I said, eh, there's nothing you can really do with Google Maps. It's not really going to do anything. You know, it's not going to be popular. Maybe it'll be one of the things that they cancel at some point. I just do, couldn't see it at that time. Then, fast forward, we all know this app. A revolutionary app called Uber. Ethics aside on this one, of course, as well. But formed in 2009 at a conversation and then launched in 2011. What if the spatial service was able to use a map? What if you could call a limo or a cab, as they were thinking about it, immediately as they were first released as Uber Cab, and then see where they are as they're coming to you? And then what happens? Everybody says, this was amazing. This is such a great idea. This is exactly what my spatial service needs. Then all the services start to add this. You start to see it everywhere. And then what ends up happening is Uber took five years from that idea that you can do this to actually releasing an app that absolutely takes over everything. I can't tell you. How many of you do uh, app development? So in app development, how many times have you had a person say, I have this great app idea? All right, I'll give you 2% of the company, so you'll work for free. And what I'm going to do is, it's like Uber, but for blah. Now, we've got this vernacular. We've got this way of speaking to each other. We're not saying, like, it's maps, and it can do everything. We're saying, guess what? It's the idea of applying the map and the spatial payment system to my business. It's Uber, but for this. It's a descriptive word now. And so whether you like Uber or you prefer Lyft or you use cabs yourself or you just want to drive yourself anyway, everybody understands that terminology. And once that terminology is there, that's what everybody is going to be able to refer to. And then what happens after this becomes a term is it comes to consultants. So for the first five years, you could just become one of the millionaires. And then after that, you're just one of the people who goes ahead and helps build Uber but for blank, Uber but for this. And now it's expected. Raise your hand if you've worked with the Maps API now. Yeah, look at this. It's, it, you have to have that in all your apps. That's what happened. And that is where we are. The idea of what AI can do is what it can't do. We're just in analysis paralysis at the moment. There's too many things it can do. And I can demonstrate that for you today because we're just going to make up ideas that are interesting, that could be businesses, that could take off, and then we're going to implement them with some React code. And you're going to see just how fast 
The problem isn't that the code's not there. The problem is that we aren't there yet. And once we are there, this is where it's going to really connect. So it'll be in all apps. It'll be inside all devices. Think about all the AI hardware that's already in place. It'll be in all products. If you want to deny that, enjoy your next probably less than five years. So it goes everywhere just like JavaScript. So why not just use JavaScript? And I think that that's funny because it's actually quite practical. We can use TensorFlow, TensorFlow Lite, and TensorFlow.js. The book I wrote is actually on TensorFlow.js. One thing I did that I will not do live, I'm not brave enough to do this live, there's no chance I would ever have these images ready to go in front of you. This is an animated GIF of, yes, I say GIF, of a not safe for work detector. This is for free. It is being used by Discord communities around the world. It's all over the place. Now, how is this scaling so that it's free? Because it's not running on the server. I'm not running a server that does this. It's open source, and it runs on the client machine as those images come over. So imagine if we had a chat app right now inside the conference, and someone sends you a photo, and it comes in blurred out, says, we're 95% sure you do not want to unblur this photo. Wouldn't that be great? Now, there's entire companies or entire sections at Facebook that have to stare at this disgusting content all day. And uh, those people uh, often quit their jobs. But now we can have AI take that part for us. And this is free and open source. It's not safe for work, js.com. Additionally, what about a product like trying on makeup? We have people trying on makeup. And you don't care about the model anymore. It's not the secret sauce. What's actually important is that people buy your product. So wouldn't it be great if instead you could try on 50 different types or 50 different outfits and then say add to cart, the whole thing goes to your cart and you press the buy button. This is something we did for a client. It came with really fun pull requests late at night like this with uh, Leon actually working on it really late at night, trying on makeup and sending his pull requests in. One of my favorites. You're looking good, Leon. Thank you. <laughs> so how can we do that? So I'd love to do a little experiment with you. Now, I know the network is kind of uh, slow. So if it works, it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Are you in? Yes. OK, good. So I want you to go ahead and try. I did a, app site, a website called Enjoying the Show. And so what I want you to do is go to enjoyingthe.show slash room slash India. And when you go to this website, it'll do two things. One, it'll download the model to it. And that's the part that's just going to absolutely drive the network completely into the ground. <laughs> the second thing it's going to do is ask to access your camera. Please give it access to your camera. None of your faces are going to be sent over the wire. That's way too much bandwidth. It's not going to do it. It's actually going to run directly on your phone. It's going to run in real time directly on your phone. And all it's going to send to me is the results. So if you go into enjoying the dot show slash room slash India, what happens is we have this room here. So we have people joining. Fantastic. Lots of people in the room. And what's happening is as you're making faces at your phone, I'm getting a result of just how good I'm doing on stage. Oh, hey, some of you actually like me. Good. Oh, some of you are mad at me. Good. <laughs> That's sad. Who's making sad faces in the audience? So as you're using this right now, you could be looking at your phone, and you're getting the immediate feedback from the camera. What you're seeing is you're seeing your own face, and you're seeing as you make faces, it's telling you what they are with a different precision. And then it's not leaving your phone. All it's sending me is a string that says whether you're happy, sad, angry, uh, different emotions. So imagine that I could actually kind of just do this and talk to you all remotely. Uh, this is a big, fun experiment. Can I get everybody to be real angry at their phone for a second? Like, oh, it's just like, that, that, oh, don't be surprised I said that. <laughs> Slowly, the angry people are just fighting against neutral. People are like, I, I'm not doing this face for you. Uh, this website is also free. So uh, what you can do is, if you want to go ahead and try this, experiment with it, you can open one tab that's a watch room and one tab that is a uh, like an actual sitting in that room, and then you can make faces and watch the pie chart work over a set. But thank you to the 110 people who have downloaded or downloading the model right now and getting things all set up. I love the faces y'all are making. 
y'all look ridiculous in the audience right now. I just want you to know this. <laughs> but yeah, feel free to play with this later. It's a lot of fun. You can see how many people. We have 33 of you are just OK at the moment. That's perfect. Oh, some of you are getting happier. <laughs> OK. Fantastic. So that doesn't require a lot of processing. Why is that service free? Because most of the work's done on your phone, and I'm happy to cover the GraphQL costs to go ahead and send a couple of strings across the wire. So you do these kind of projects over and over and over and over again, and you start to see some patterns, right? Now, the funny part is when you're starting these projects, it's all happy, but there's a lot of extra code that kind of goes into these. But what I want to show you is that there's a library that we did. There's actually two libraries I'm going to show you today. One of them has been out for a little bit. The other one is an announcement. Ooh, yes. Can I hear it? Ooh, yes. Ooh, yes. Oh, I love that. That's fantastic. All right, so AI Lab. I want to show you AI Lab real quick because this is a React component which helps you build these connect with AI friendly. So yes, it's open source. So let's kind of see how to go ahead and use this. Let's do some code real quick, OK? We'll close this out. Y'all are all still having fun in that room, but I'm going to close you out right now. And then I'm going to open up some code real quick. So I'm going to talk about this code real fast. And uh, I wish I had more than 30 minutes. I could eh, Please, afterward, come talk to me about AI. Talk to me about the ethics of it. Talk to me about the tools. Talk to me about all those other parts, because I could talk about this all day. So we're going to start off with a really simple project right here. We're going to start with, essentially, we're going to load the model from Google. So that's just going to go ahead and kill everything. And then, uh, <laughs> then we're going to go ahead and just say that we've got the model real quick. So when I do that, if we take a look at the process here, you see that I refresh it. And you can see it downloaded the model. And it grabbed it all right here into the network tab. It's all cached. All right, no, is it downloading it in real time? No, it's all, this is all the cache files. Okay? So now we have this AI model that's capable of identifying all kinds of different things uh, ready to go. So I don't like to live code. I mentioned to somebody that the other day, so I'm a live uncomment. So I'm going to start off with how do you detect a person? So detecting a person with this model. And so why would you want to detect a person? Maybe you want to see, you want to add this to a security camera. You know? Or maybe you put it on your webcam in your office. Like if it's after 3 p.m., nobody should be in your office or something like that. That's a cool idea. There you go. Office detector, you know, dot com. There, there's a service. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we have an AI lab local video component here. And then we're going to load in the model and pass its configuration. And then on inference, we're going to check the results. And what the results are going to do is go ahead and we're just going to say that set the total number of people to the length of the results. Because if you see right here in filter, we're filtering only for people, which is class zero. So what this code is saying is like, give me people. And then set, we're going to use this use state to set total people to that account. And then what I'm going to do is if the total people is greater than zero, Alarm detected. So now we're going to go ahead and set the background color red. Um, I can also set that to purple if somebody wants to see some extra colors in here. So just let me know. Uh, so I save this. I'll save over here so we're going to detect, detect a person. And then let's see this code in action, OK? So close this here. And so here we have our security camera. And when I hit play on here, there, as a person walks onto the screen, we've detected them. We're seeing about 35 frames per second, and they walk off, and then they're gone. We added a bounding box. Woohoo! We just made officealarmdetector.com. It sends out a tweet, says, hey, this person's in there, takes a screenshot, shows you who they are. All right, product number one. Now, let's see what else we can do. I'm going to now detect with some, uh, we're going to detect multiple people. Let's say that you're having a party. And the party is only allowed to have uh, four people at it, you know, or something like that. You, you have a service, and you want to make sure that after it goes over a certain number of people, um, you get a detection there, right? That sounds like it could be a real thing. If you run like an Airbnb, or you have a service, you have to make sure that a certain number of people aren't here. Counting people is an easy service. So we counted one person. The code for that is really easy, because we're setting the result lengths of how many people we saw. So now I'm just going to set the background to be when it's greater than three people. The amount of code that I just wrote is like, hey, AI, 
detect people, and then turn the background red. This isn't going to be very difficult. We're all following here, right? Everybody's following? Give me a woohoo! <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. So we've run this code here. Let's see what we've got. So counting people. Let's start here. All right, there. One, two, three, four. And then we get red. Five, six, seven, blah, 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 and it comes back down. And three people. Two, one, zero. So what happened there? You saw a little bit of flicker that was going on. It's because the angle of this video is not ideal. You'd, normally, you'd want to have like multiple cameras and some kind of voting classifier that comes through. But if you take a look, what, uh, you see how these two people crossed exactly at the same time? AI is going to do its best <laughs> to a certain degree, but at, once they get this close to one another, it says that they're currently three people instead of four. As soon as they pass each other again, you'll get four again. So you do need multiple angles. That's just like any human being. As a matter of fact, a lot of AI cameras have two lenses in it to get some kind of depth of field so they can be more human-like. So as soon as I hit play, it'll go red again, and then you'll see it flicker in and out when people cross one another. Is anybody being left behind with this insanely difficult React code that I'm writing up here? No? Good. Because this is the kind of stuff that you'll be asked to add into apps. And so peopledetector.com, uh, set the number of people and then send a tweet or a message when it goes over a certain number. Ta-da, there's another app idea. Oh, they, they won't leave my screen. Stop. OK, good. And so I want to do one last thing here. Um, we're going to go ahead and bring one last example in here. Uh, for web, then we'll see where we go from there. So app complete. So this one is going to imagine that you're, uh, you have the camera look at the whole room, but only, you only care about half of it, right? You, you know at the airport when you're supposed to, uh, uh, in the US, we actually were not allowed to go through security and like come back through the other area and go back. We don't have those cool machines that open and close that stop only one person from going through. We have a dude who sits there and he's like, you can't go back. <laughs> That's that dude's life. I know he does not want to do that. He is, he, there's a lot of better things for them to do. Um, but maybe he, he's, he's coding in his spare time, so he decides to set up something where he could detect when people are going over to the wrong area. I'm just going to say that there's a, there's a no-no zone and there's a good zone, okay? And the way I'm going to do that is I'm splitting the screen in half. So the code that's going to be here is I'm going to put just a simple line down the middle. And if you take a look at the code here, here's the model. Same exact model. Detecting people, same exact thing. I'm simply just changing the source videos here. And you could set this to a webcam as well, or other things, or pictures and stuff. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to take the people and the check results, which is going to happen here, and set the total people. But I'm going to check whether or not the box from the people is on the wrong side. What is the wrong side? Halfway through the screen, 0 0.5. So that means this side of the screen, good. That side of the screen, bad. 0 0.5 right down the middle. I put a little red line down the middle. So if this happens and a person walks from one side of the screen to the other side of the screen and it detects them and turns red, I need you all to give me some applause. Sound good? OK, let's do this. Or maybe even applause with a woohoo. I'm liking the woohoos. So here we go. We have zero out of zero people are on the wrong side. Here we go. Don't do it. Don't you dare. Don't you. Ah, she did it. Woo! <laughs> I love it. So there's an idea. There's another app. Like uh, whether you have no-no zones and you can block them off, you just use it with a screen. And then those are just normalized to different parts of the screen to 0 0.5. The, the boxes are from 0 to 1 to the size of the camera size. So it works everywhere. And so then you have another app idea that's set right there. So you could do all of this right now with what we have inside of AI Lab. And so for a client, and they okayed me to do this, actually use uh, AI Lab to go ahead and detect how many squats that we're doing. And the trick is you got to do squats. Like, I'm not always looking straight at cameras. So sometimes I'm facing this way or facing that way. And they had me decide to go ahead, let's go ahead. And so that exact same React components you're looking at is counting me doing squats or doing different exercises. So they would say, do this exercise, and then it counts the reps that you need to do for that. So that's really cool. Uh, I could talk about that to a certain degree. <laughs> Some of that's under NDA. But um, it's super fun. So what about doing this on phones? So here's a part. Just uh, I've got a little bit more time left. How about running this on phones? Well, you could take the same models and 
just do a small conversion and then run them with React and React Native, running them on the actual devices. And to make that more familiar, make that easier, went down to a deeper level. Because MLKit, which is a really cool thing that Google does, is perfect for running high inference, high speed, really intense and really intelligent, very useful models on the phone. As a matter of fact, they already prepackage a lot of the wonderful models for you. As AI Vision for MLKit has barcode scanning, face detection, face mesh detection, text recognition, image labeling, object detection and tracking, digital ink recognition. I'm not even sure I know what that one is. And then pose detection. So we can do all of this using a phone. And this is set because Google is making sure that MLKit works perfectly with both iOS and Android. Now, they also have some text uh, selfie segmentation. Don't forget about that one. That's important. So natural language, they have language identification, translation, smart reply, entity extraction. So the thing that's great about this is that Google solved all this and make sure it works on iOS and Android, but they make you write it in native iOS and native Android. So uh, naturally, there's not enough JavaScript in that for me. <laughs> there needs to be more JavaScript in all of our lives all the time. So what we're doing here is that we took React Native, combined that with MLKit to create, ta-da, MLKit plus React Native. Yeah, woo! I love it. I wish I could say that I'm copyrightable enough for open source. So yes, this is open source. So I just want to show you a quick, we've converted several demos over and we started with the first three that we thought were the most important. So I'm going to click on our docs. And you can see here that we have the face detection, the image labeling, and the object detection already done. Those are already wrapped. All you have to do is write React Native to go ahead and do those. If you have a business need to do any of the others, please contribute. It's open source. If you can't, we're a consultancy. We can do it. We just cost money. We're very good at it, though, so <laughs> we're happy to help out. And so just to see how this works right here, I have the demo app running right here. We have object detection. Uh, we have face detection. So there's no face, face, no face, face. There you go. And so we have um, object detection, face detection, and image labeling with the not safe for work uh, using a custom model, like just throw it in there rather than one of the ones that comes from MLKit. So let's do an object detection. I'll do a random image. So yeah, here we are selecting stuff, and seeing things in the image. There you go. And I know it's ridiculously small, <laughs> but feel free to pull this down and run it. You can see the labels. You can see what it's seeing in the actual images, and you can start to apply this. Um, maybe you want to use eye tracking recognition to see what, um, and, and remember, ethics are absolutely at the core of this. But if you do have people's permission and they're coming up to the carts and they're able to see like what people are interested in, what they're going to buy. You could see where their faces are. You could see what their expressions are. But again, be careful with this. Uh, it, is, it can be quite invasive to have AI watching every person and judging them at the same time. So I say use this all appropriately. Excellent. So we have all of these in place. Let's see. And I'll finish out the slides right here. All right. So the next part is whether or not it's ethical, whether or not it works, whether or not you're left behind, or whether or not we all work together, it can't just be me. It has to be you. It has to be. This is the part. If you keep waiting, if you want to wait five years for other things, or even shorter because everybody does everything faster each time we go through this cycle, if you want to wait for it to just show up and then people start asking for features, and you're like, okay, well, I'll figure it out then. Sure, that sounds good. But I think we're all more empowered when we start talking about it together. When we start using React and AI together. When we start building these components in open source so that we all get it for free and we all get it to help one another. So the key part is we start with you. I just want to say, 
please tweet those photos. This is my book. It's called Learning TensorFlow.js. I love this book. I worked very hard on it. It is a wonderful one. And I did ship it here, so it, maybe it will arrive today. Who knows? And if I have it, uh, we'll take a look at Twitter and see if I can find some of the people who did some of the tweets from today. I really appreciate it. And then please use the hashtag. Get this conference trending. You have the people. You have the energy. You have the passion. I've spoken to so many of you already, and I know it's deep down inside. And so everybody needs to see that. And trust me, I'm an introvert nerd. I know I'm up here. I'm like, hey, but I'm an introvert nerd. <laughs> and I know how hard it is to talk about the things you're at and the people and yourself, but the world needs to know these kinds of things. And so I want us all to talk together. I want you to come talk to me. I want us to talk about all this technology together. And, I, and let's take all the photos and tell the whole world about this. I want to say thank you to some of the comrades at Infinite Red who went ahead and worked on AI Lab and in uh, React Native ML Kit. This is Kate Kim and Trevor Coleman. And then I want to say thanks so much to Infinite Red for sending me across the globe and then for everybody being so patient while I figure out how to get here while my flights get canceled and I book a new flight and I get over here anyway. Uh, you couldn't stop me from coming here, React India. I was here. And uh, so, like I said, I'm very happy to meet with you all. I want to talk to each and every one of you. Please come up and talk to me and keep in touch. Thank you so much. <laughs>